signed and we're still in negotiations, uh, Alice, I think I can say that his order alone will be 450000 a month. Oh, yay. Yay for us. Yay for Southern Oregon. That is awesome. God, that's He's great. Mark is the founder and president of the Southern Oregon Hemp Co-op, where all things hemp are discussed. And we are so excited to be part of this new industry here in Southern Oregon. Welcome back, Mark. You're one of our favorite people to talk to. How are things with you today? Oh, they're really good, Alice. Um, I, I look forward to this podcast. I've been looking forward to it all day because uh, we have some exciting news. And, ta-da, <laughs> what is it? Oh, that's uh, that's not a very much of a drum roll. Oh. Uh, but uh, I don't even know what it is. So I'm super excited. Yeah, I think I let the cat out of the bag here with you maybe a few days um, earlier. Uh, we did uh, purchase, or I should say inherit, a uh, hemp dryer, a portable hemp dryer. I'm very excited. We're going to go pick it up tomorrow. And it's a oh, big Oh, that's one. right. Yay. It gives, it gives the co-op something substantial something real that folks can see. And uh, we are working with the rest of the board since we're just assessing the, the dryer now. We've had a few of the board members go out and look at it. And I've got uh, one of my uh, uh, trucks that's gonna go, uh, look, you know, it's a big um, fifth wheel type of a configuration, 42 foot long, I believe. Wow. And so it's got really nice equipment in it, I think. Uh, I don't know this for sure, but uh, from what the, um, the seller told me it does about a thousand pounds an hour. Wow. Believe, yeah, it's and and what we're contemplating is a plan to uh, rent the equipment to qualified um, uh, farmers that would want to in, uh, enter into an agreement like on a weekend to have it for that Monday and uh, and pretty much let them take control of it just like they would rent uh, from uh, United Rentals or or you know a local farm dealer and uh, show them how to operate it and use it and then uh, rent it for a 24-hour period um, based on performance but we're not sure so i want to qualify that just to say it's kind of up in the air we've got it and we're wondering just how we will either put it on a piece of property and make it a permit fixture or keep it mobile we just don't know but it's nice to have wow. a, mo a mobile yeah. dryer that's yeah, it, it, it I mean, let us, that sink in for a minute. That's crazy. That's great. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big move. It's not inexpensive, that's for sure. But uh, we look at, we, we want to be a part of this community and, and in a way uh, service as part of it. We, we surely do enough in uh, giving out, uh, I think, all of the technical and the uh, relation building information that we have. But it is nice to have something uh, physical that we own and uh, will help uh, farmers, hopefully with the bottom line, because we're not here uh, to make a lot of money. We're here to build relationships, and, uh, and that may be part of it. Uh, we have a little bit you heard it here first, folks, on Happy Hemp Day. <laughs> there. And, and also, people can, I would like a few premier people, maybe if you'd like to make an appointment to see it, uh, to contact me, Mark Taylor. And, mm -hmm. uh, and what's your number, Mark? Uh, 541-601-5130. And Very good. Uh, yep, I get calls pretty late at night, but I'd like to limit that to not too many after nine o'clock. But you I'm could let it go to the voicemail, sir. That's true. Your your wife would probably like that. <laughs> Would like well, that. and I don't think people um, always realize the time difference because you you have contacts all over the world, right? Uh, at least a lot from the East Coast, and that's uh, that's really trumped up here the past um, uh, the past few uh, few weeks. Uh, if I could move right into a, another topic, then I think that kind of leads us to it. Um, we have uh, been contacted. This has been kind of ongoing, but in a uh, in in pretty much a forceful way. The New Mexico Hemp Co-op and the West Virginia Hemp Co-op. Uh, I only have an email from uh, Elizabeth with the uh, West Virginia Hemp Co-op, but. I think as you and I have uh, spoken and correct me, Lisa, if I'm wrong here, but they uh, both of the, both uh, Eon and, uh, and Elizabeth want to uh, fly the banner of the golden fields of our, of our co-op logo. And wow. uh, what's really exciting, and I would like to share it on a future co-op because Eon with the New Mexico Hemp Co-op has written a complete business plan of what he's involved in. And they are seemingly, to me, very advanced in fiber, fuel, biofuels, 
uh, medicine. I talked to you last week about they said that they have a successful drink. I don't know what that means, but that it's a COVID. Yeah, that's kind of mysterious. We have a successful drink. <laughs> yeah, it's a successful drink to help the COVID-19 uh, um, uh, battle that we have going on. And apparently it's been tested. It's, maybe it's a health or energy drink or uh, uh, I, I don't know all there is to know about it. But what I like is they have multiple programs and platforms uh, backed by a team. And uh, they underwrote a uh, business plan called Prosperity for Life. As uh -huh. part of I'm excited about it because basically to me it comes across as uh, teaching business plans, teaching a complete cycle of how to make it and uh, not only just make it, but how to prosper in the world of hemp. Very, Ian uh, appears to be a very sophisticated high level uh, hemp entrepreneur that's been in the business for six or seven years now and uh, and uh, really seems to be quite a comp. We're, we're just excited, whatever they are, if they come with integrity and earnest, uh, we're, we're very happy to show the world that the hemp co-ops can be nationwide. And this will help so much to represent the United States of America as a premier producer of hemp. Uh, yeah. I think a long with, way. with standards, because we have standards. And, and when somebody says they want to be part of the co-op, and fly under our golden banner, then what they're saying is they're agreeing to, you know, putting certain practices and uh, certain standards in place so that there's consistency and reliability with the product, correct? Correct, and that, and that once again ties in, you mentioned the Golden Grow uh, Award. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know anybody, uh, and I don't think I'm representing it wrong because uh, even though it was the co-op that come up with the trademark to run the Golden Grow, uh, type of idiom for professional growers to win and have competition, which I think is good for the mm -hmm. industry, all trying to get better. So during Harvest Festival, we'll be speaking of that here pretty soon. We'll have to be organizing the principles on how to get um, uh, better uh, CBD, better yield, better terpenes, uh, better nose, so to speak, for our flower. And we have the benefit now of having 16 farmers as you know, Alice, I participated in the Golden Grow Awards last year. Which is quite a lot, I think, for a brand new industry. Yeah, and so we hope to be able to gain some information that they would share uh, going forward and uh, tell us how to get, uh, you know, all the farmers how to get better. And once again, that's what I appreciate so much about the hemp industry. Uh, and, I, and I think the farmers that are viewers out there right now understand that we are a coalescing group that... Uh, want to lift all boats. And uh, I still love that about our, our hemp industry. So yeah, that, that ties in that the platform that we have built under this little Golden Grill banner uh, has been well received by Ian. I haven't had a chance to talk to Elizabeth about it, but um, we really like the idea of, uh, of, of branding hemp as being high quality. And I can't think of a better way to do it than to use the Golden Grill banner and the Golden Grill principles on how to produce high quality, uh, both biomass and, uh, and flour. Well, and it really um, protects the consumer too. I mean, if you think about it, it's in the best interest of everybody to have, you know, this, it's, it's, it's like we used to have the good housekeeping seal of approval. I mean, maybe we even still have that, I don't know. But um, it, it really is a seal of approval. And for a grower to receive that is huge because they can use it in their marketing and um, their clients, uh, customers will feel comfortable so that's very true it's uh, the judges if if those buying it know that the the panel last year was three very accomplished uh, professionals that uh, know um, uh, everything from terpenes to nose to CBD and uh, and when they judge it and they give it that golden girl winner that has to say say something and what I'm excited about is last year was the first year I know we can get better I know Judging will get sterner probably. I'm, I'm hoping that we have a little bit of money this year for our farmers that win. Uh, some type of trip or, you know, uh, overnight vacation. So do they, just get, do they just get bragging rights for, for now? <laughs> Got plaques and, and plaque. uh, a sign for their farm to put out. And the sign is super important, yeah. A winner of the Golden Grow. But uh, yeah, it's a way to make every region uh, know that... Um, uh, that we represent our product well. If you buy like the golden seal or approval, a good housekeeper's all approval, that's part of it. It's also our, our pairs are in the Valley. We're known, they did a very good, uh, uh, the Pair Association, Rogue Valley Pair Association did a great job on branding Comus and uh, Bartlett and the type of pairs are some of the best in the world. And 
we were known as the paragrowing capital of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people would pay big bucks from all over the world to get just a small box of our pears. The pear uh, crop has been a big, a big deal here in Southern Oregon. So I was going to ask you because um, you, you mentioned West Virginia and New Mexico, and those are two completely different um, ecological patterns. They're, they're different kinds of soil. Um, and yet they're growing hemp. So what are some of the similarities and differences that you see in the West Virginia area um, and New Mexico compared to Southern Oregon? Yeah, I, I would only know this from just a, a, a brief uh, you know, geological uh, review going clear back to uh, the high school days is of course the, um, uh, the East Coast is more humid. Uh, humidity can attract uh, mold and there's, the, the, you know, whatever I say about another region, uh, growers and the farm entrepreneurs do a great job in learning seed genetics, um, growing techniques, uh, harvesting techniques, storage techniques. Uh, the plant is still very valuable. We've had, a, we talk about the little drop in prices that we've had, or actually a pretty, pretty huge drop in prices, but it's still a very valuable crop. So anybody that grows it um, with knowledge is going to take precautions and uh, precautions means being educated within your region because even here in Oregon, we have extreme, I don't know if I could say extreme, but we have very pronounced uh, climate differences. The, the Willamette Valley is, in growing hemp is, uh, is different than the Rogue Valley. We have mm -hmm. a little growing season, the moisture is a little bit less. Uh, both areas um, present their challenges. And I think if you ask five hemp farmers, or 10, you know, five and five from each area, what area uh, grows the best hemp between the Rogue Valley and the Willamette Valley, they would at least say that we have less challenges down here. Oh, they, they think we have it easier? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> Generally, we do because the Willamette Valley will have more rainstorms, I believe. It will come up. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, and rain, and rain at certain times, hey, if it dries out again, it's not bad at all, but if you have a rainstorm in the Lambert Valley and it starts to get cool in October, uh, you better watch it because that could invite mold. And, and, and likewise here, that if it uh, rains and then it gets really hot, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's really warm, that also can invite mold. And doesn't that say, and doesn't that say a lot for challenges and what farmers have to go through right there? Because well, and that's what I would say. It's just hard to be a farmer and God bless you guys for getting out there um, on any crop and, and being the entrepreneur, but to, to do it with hemp when it's a brand new industry to boot, I think is especially uh, adventurous and risky. And we're just so happy you guys are out there doing it. How's your, um, how's your crop doing so far? I know it's early in the season, but where are you in your process? Well, um, we're, what I've mentioned, and uh, I don't know, it was the last, it's probably been a couple of weeks ago, is that I elect to have a local farmer uh, grow the hemp for me. And, uh, oh, okay. So you have yeah. help. Yeah. In other words, I'm really busy with the co-op and I have, a, uh, I have another business, as you're aware, and I stay very busy. And I just can't, uh, I just can't tend, um, tend to the crop like I would like to. So I think it's a smart move. Uh, this year, I don't really know where he's at. Even we have talked. I know that he's going to reduce his uh, his farm down to um, uh, from about 23 acres down to about half, about 11 acres this year. And I think that's true with a lot of farmers. Uh, a little bit nerve wracking as to what uh, what can happen going ahead. In other words, uh, you really got to know your ROI and uh, and uh, make sure that if it's another tough year that you have the capital and you have the fortitude to carry forward. Mm -hmm. Just like any other business, farming is not different. Yep. And, and then what happened was last year, you'll talk to a lot of farmers and uh, because there wasn't the uh, large capital infusion and to selling uh, all their product in one swoop, they've had to pick away at it and like, like the old adage goes, abide your time. Well, they've kind of had to uh, put their money out sparingly and, uh, and nobody likes to borrow to plant crops. So I think capital uh, requirements, uh, at least being flushed with cash, a lot of farmers are not so. And so uh, they've had to reduce the investment. They, uh, they only have so much to invest, I should say. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think, I think that can be good because you still got to be really supremely uh, uh, sharpen your skills We've got to be better this year than we were last year. And I'm seeing that um, over and over again. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to your audience. The, the 
quality and the number of people that are talking to me and working with me right now are the best of the best. Uh, they really know their business. They've identified every negative out there. They've already figured out how to face it. And I just left a farmer who uh, is he's only growing on three acres. Now he's starting to look at, he's not starting to look at it. He's going for CBD and CBG. He's reached out to several other flower people. It's almost like they have their own network. He's oh, actually, that's cool. And it sounds like, um, I don't know how to put, I just talked to him a little bit ago and he actually believes he's 90% sure he reached out to Oklahoma himself, not through the co-op and he's a co-op member, co-op farmer. Uh, he's selling to Oklahoma and he sounds like he has this whole six or 8,000 pounds all sold already. <sighs> Yay! That is so exciting because that's what we were really hoping is to start getting the buyer network, the buyer pipeline connected with the Southern Oregon hemp co-op people and, and the farmers. That is great news. People aren't going to believe this. He's not going to try to take and make that buyer his own. He's going to share that buyer with the co-op. Oh, that's super cool. But that's how we roll here in Southern Oregon. We are very inclusive and in helping with each other. Yes, uh, that's very gracious of him. You'd have to meet him to really, and, I, and he's hiring me because I'm helping him with design. I know a lot about drying facilities and buildings, or at least the buildings, because that's what my company does. And we mm -hmm. have us drying and, and just want. And so we're, he's also retaining the co-op to help him with the structure, his infrastructure and his buildings. Oh, that's great. Does he want to do a little interview with us? Um, we could, we actually have a remote camera. I don't know if you know that, Mark. We're oh. actually set up to go on site. If somebody is open to that, we can, we can do that. We have a videographer. <laughs> We're buying a brand new mic, another one. Yeah, we could do that. I can only imagine that uh, being you're such a good interviewer, you'd have the best of the best on the uh, technical. Well, I don't know. It's my daughter's uh, fiance is a film person, a film editor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yay for us. Um, but yeah, because you know, we were talking at one point about possibly um, getting some of the young farmers, the young future farmers, uh, talking about hemp. And that was something I thought, well, if we had a little remote setup, we could go to some of the schools and uh, video you or, or some of the other folks talking to a class. Well, listen, I'm going to trump you on guests and ask you this the New Mexico Hemp Co op is moving. Uh, fast and furious. I just right before the podcast here, I got off the uh, email threads with Eon, and uh, he wants to know. He made the presentation to me on the enjoining letter, and uh, I think we'll have some kind of cooperative agreement between us uh, real soon. I just think your audience would really um, uh, benefit from hearing his uh, his knowledge and some of the things that he's espoused to me. I won't let it all out of the bag. Right now, I want to let him uh, talk about it, but I just hope in the next couple of weeks, Alice, that I can introduce you to Eon Ladd is his name. And I don't usually say that until I have a signed deal, but it doesn't matter whether they stay independent, we're gonna work together in some format because it's really a good idea to have technology, to have uh, their buyers, have our buyers, um, uh, different tractor services that we, that we are techniques, I should say, and, and farming that we're gonna share. And uh, if we take the same cooperators type of attitude that we're trying to bring forth from our members and the meetings that we have, and we extend that to other co-ops that are also talented and also very advanced in either growing techniques or, or products that they're producing. And by the way, Eon is uh, also into a skincare uh, type of products. And, and they do have- I'm a sorry, he's into what? What did you say? Ian's he, into what? Or he, he has a, he's developed a line of skincare Oh, skincare, right. Right, products. And so that's something that, that's something that we have, uh, again, talked and talked about is that it seems like we're a little bit behind um, the, the mindset of changing farmers that are sitting at home some seasons from, uh, from just saying, well, I'm going to grow again. Not that there's anything wrong with challenging the market and getting out there and growing. But once again, you and I have spoke to this uh, issue, Alice. It'd be really, really good if only 10% of our farmers uh, started thinking products, started believing that they could make, once again, anything from animal products uh, to a skin care, to hair care, to all the, all the things that are online. All you gotta do is go online and there's so many people, they're not in Oregon, I don't see it, but are coming up with, and of course it's common to take CBD, re, re bottle it, re 
label it and make your own product. I think that's great. I think that's great. Oregon needs jobs. We talk about that. I was just thinking that, and it's one of the applica- it was the, the application is where the, the, um, the biggest um, help to the consumers you know, to help the human and the animal population, it's it's going to be in the application of the plant. But that's also where a lot of the profit and the good jobs. I mean, can you just imagine if we had all different kinds of 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 hemp products and hemp processing and hemp packaging? Yes, and uh, it's going to be very good for Southern Oregon. You know, some people are worried about the smell. Is the processing because we don't have a ton of processing here yet? Is processing going to be scent challenging? Well, different kinds of processing. I think you can still do drying on your farm. You can only dry a certain amount of it. Now, that's another process that may give off the odors of uh, of hemp a little bit more. But you have to have a commercial piece of property to do oil processing extraction and uh and that type of endeavor so and it's uh, like I, that on any crop i don't want people to feel like we're 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 picking on hemp you it's the same with cattle you cannot process your butchering on your agricultural site correct you have to take it into right. town and commercial. and do it on an industrial commercial industrial zoning it's a zoning issue so we're not right. taking on hemp Right, but um, that's been kind of the problem. Is even though you know we we didn't even have buildings to process in anyway, <laughs> so we're running out there. Um, well, we are finding that uh, on that subject. If I might just uh, switch to that, uh, the buildings. Uh, some of our board members uh, have a property management type. One of them does property management type firms and. He had lost three buildings from uh, lost of meaning leases because the, the businesses failed. And um, they're all back full again, all with hemp type uh, businesses. That's and, really uh, lucky because in Southern Oregon, they're predicting a downturn in commercial buildings starting this fall. Yeah, he's, he's good at what he does. That's but very lucky. He's full again. I don't know if it's negative or positive. Your viewers will have to decide or the hemp farmers will have to decide. But all three of these structures and I forget the size of it, but I know they range from anywhere, I'm going to say, from eight to 10,000 square feet to 30,000 square feet. Oh, that's they're, huge. They're all filled by quite substantial national, two of them that I know of are, uh, are occupied by national presence corporations involved in, in, in processing. And I believe wow. it's true. Yeah. Well, that is so exciting to have that. That's good jobs. Those are good paying W-2 jobs for Southern Oregon. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. And hey, that also takes me into what happened today. Today, Alice, the Southern Oregon Hemp Co-op moved a, uh, I don't think it matters either way whether I say how much, but uh, I just felt comfortable saying a very large amount of isolate. And uh, not only did we move it, but the, the, the firm did everything uh, financially correct. And as you know, we've been talking about the best hemp practices for some time. This is a contractual agreement that speaks to the integrity, uh, it speaks to a complete business plan, and then it also underwrites the contract, non-compete, what each party will make. Oh, Both. that's nice, that's really yeah. nice. Loved it, it's, it's, uh, it's written in a personal way, it's a narrative to introduce the parties, to say we are here uh, to meet under good and civil terms, to uh, operate with integrity, and each person uh, that uh, says what they have stated will follow through on that. Uh, timing, we mentioned things like timing and consideration of time is very important. So if you say you're going to show up with the funds to purchase it, we expect that anyway. Uh, that's something the co-op's been working on for about six or eight months. I finally finished it off just before this deal, to be honest with you. Wow. Fine with a star rating system. So if you agree to operate in our best hemp practices, if you do what you say you do, it gives you like an Angie's list, if I could use that, pretty common uh, rating system. So if the deal is transacted, uh, it gives you up to four stars. And that way, and the, and this particular person came from Portland, Oregon, with his funds, took care of everything. And, uh, and boy, he remembered to say, you know, I did what I said. So I really appreciate it. as a not a, he's not a broker. This is a person that has personal money to invest in hemp. Uh, mm -hmm. But he said, I want my I want my rating because uh, you, uh, you, when you write something up, I've got to do it now. And sure well, enough, uh, 
we well, should be, yeah, and we should be um, sending those out in our um, our social media network. So, um, yeah, so email me some stuff on that. And if you actually have the rating document, we can put that on the podcast. People can download that. We can put it on the website for you. Yeah, the criteria is kind of in the BHP, the best hemp practices. And I think mm -hmm. I told you where I got uh, best hemp practices from in business, uh, especially in greed and lead council type of, of structures, they have a um, they have a best management practices, and you have to follow those management practices. This from, is so cool. Yeah, construction materials through recycling, through how you address every aspect of the uh, of the uh, excess materials, and how you uh -huh. look into other materials, what recycling centers, and I just couldn't think of anything any better to uplift the industry that. Uh, Hey, it started in Oregon. The co-op kind of established it, and it seems to be meeting. It's not my idea. It's a, it's members. It's everybody um, putting out there. Hey, we should have some kind of agreement that's simple, that's strong and contractual. But it also says if we perform and we operate in a business-like manner, we should get a rating as a broker or a buyer that says we're darn good. Because yeah, that's yeah, that's great. That's why I love this organization, Mark. It's just awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, New Mexico will benefit from that too because sometimes people come from out of areas and I, I never say anybody that's a buyer means wrong, but a lot of folks do not have the funds that they represent that they have. And I, I don't think they hear the disappointment that I hear when a hemp farmer will call me and say, hey, you sent me a buyer, which I did on the messenger now, right? And uh, they said they were going to call me back and they never called me back. And so there's hurt there because guess what? A farmer just spent two hours with you of their time and I can feel that. And, and then of course they're expecting money and the person never calls. So part of the best hint practices is that you follow through on what you say. And we hope Yeah, that. yeah. And you know, this idea of as a buyer, of you should have your financial documents um, presented up front is very common in every other business. You, you mean, you can't, you can't go look at houses without having uh, financial letters of um, documentation. Uh, so, and I'm pretty sure in, in other crop industries, you don't just go onto somebody's farm without being vetted as a buyer. So that yeah, is, this is all so very well, standard business practice. That's so well said. And I did steal, even though I did, I don't think I put that in there clear enough, but some of it's a, a, a document and works, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and consequently the real estate does have a, uh, a pre-qualifying type of a uh, of an arrangement that they want, and, and why do they want that? From what I know, um, there has been a lot of real estate people that are hurt by spending all day with somebody, and then they find out that they're not pre-qualified. Well, and the sellers too. You know, the people whose property you're touring, whether it's a hemp farm or a house, or you're you're looking at um, you know corn. It's um, yeah, and you know we could we could have a fillable application that you know almost like the way you would fill out um i, I don't want to say a loan application but it could be kind of modeled like that and it's like if you're buying if you're a purchase person like the retail purchase people have then you fill out this application it says this is where my money's coming from and we double check everything and we call their whatever and say yes they have the the funds, we get a letter from their bank or the person who's financing them. Because some of these people are getting financing privately, right? Like private lenders, private investors, they it need does. to be vetted too. And so, yeah, we should, let's work on that. That would be so so quick and easy to do. They could fill out the application and then somebody on our side could uh, double check everything. Yeah, I guess we'd be kind of discussing our private little business here, but you and I are very transparent, so we don't mind our co-op uh, audience here, uh, farmers hearing Oh, this. is that something I wasn't supposed to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just kidding. That was tongue in cheek because- that's Oh, okay. Because I just I just think everybody should be out in the open <laughs> with this stuff. So. That's right. And you have a real estate uh, background, so you've seen many financial documents. I know that there are some that are sensitive about it, but you really can't be sensitive if you can say- No, uh, if you are an authentic purchaser, and you're on a purchasing um, trip, then, I mean, if you go to China to buy supplies for your manufacturing, you have to produce all of your documentation and it gets checked out ahead of time before you get on the plane. 
Yes. Yeah, no, that's why you, you know more about that than I do. I'm going to uh, share that document with you and let's see if we can maybe add a few little clauses to it. I think the, I think the basis of it is really good because it does say that, uh, that, that both parties come here with earnest and the uh, seller is representing their product to be of good quality as stated, da, 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 and the buyer is representing that they have the funds as stated. And they uh, want this much of this kind of product and mm -hmm. they want it by this time and all that's done up front yes. and then we can help guide them or suggest the particular farm or farmers i mean they can go to anybody they want but we can also help say well this person specializes in that or whatever um, and the farmer should have a copy of that purchase order correct we should get purchase orders from people yeah and uh and silicon so valley does this you can't you don't go buy a whole like ten thousand chips no potato chips but yeah, well said. So <laughs> not beating a dead horse, but I, I think the document is very casual and yet it, it's very binding. It is a it is a takeoff from an NDA and a non-compete, but it just speaks in plain language because what I found out about most farmers and most businessmen in the hemp is they just want it straight. And the thing is, if somebody will not operate or move forward after seeing the BHP, that we do want you to be vetted. We do want you to have the COAs in hand we do want you to realize that people like this gentleman on the isolate drove all the way from Portland. He only drove uh, for that reason. He made it very plain. Will the product be there when I'm there? Because I'm driving all the way from Portland. Um, there are always things that uh, can happen, but we had a tracking number. We did everything proper on our, on our end. And once again, not me, but what I feel good about is both of these parties complimented uh, the BHP and they both signed it and then said something about we like the way it was formatted. I, I appreciate that because I've been in business for 40 some years and I've seen many, many uh, contracts. I like them to be plain, plain English, not a bunch of gobbledygook. I like them to spell out the consideration and the fees and, uh, and be of a, of a linear path that's well understood. So I did take Well, and that creates trust and a good reputation in, a, in an evolving industry. Um, and it's going to expedite the Southern Oregon, not only the Southern Oregon region, but anybody that we're working with, like uh, West Virginia, like New Mexico, it starts to create consistency, reliability, and trust. And we need that as an industry. And if we get it this early on, oh my God, we're going to be unstoppable. And it helps the people. I don't want to make this, I get all excited about the business and I don't want to make it sound like it's all about the business. It's about how many more humans and animals that we can help through this, this plant. No, that's exactly right. I, you, 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 you say it uh, really simple and concise. And yet you, to me, you always bring up three other, three more topics in one. Oh, second. I'm sorry. I get excited. <laughs> sorry. You got a good point. So let me see if I can recapture what the gist of this uh, conversation is. Um, of course, it's not just animals. We also are a grain society. Our population is getting older. We have joint pain. We have skin care problems. We have all, all the difficulties that age um, uh, puts upon us. And guess what? Um, hemp is just kind of new on joint pain and arthritis. But uh, just go on Google and check. Many people are getting relief. We had uh, Matt Cyrus, so shout out to him. There's a guy that's making products. Remember, we had him as a guest three weeks ago, Allison. He's making a joint pain medicine. He's been doing it for some time. Uh, ointment with CBD. It's, it's uh, uh, my understanding with the New England Patriots used it. Uh, they have been uh, utilizing his products. Uh, on the buying side, back, so I wanted to, I wanted to make that clear, is that we, we definitely want to promote. Uh, we're here today, and we'll be here hopefully in, in all the years to come, as long as we can keep doing this, Alice. Um, because we both know of the utility, we both know of the efficacy, and we both know of the overall wondrous plant called hemp. Uh, I'm as passionate as you are about it because the growth has just begun. Uh, that's why I constantly say that we, you, I'm gonna invite you out to some of the schools and the community college. We've gotta get the ag departments uh, uh, recognizing it as a very legal, and very legal, I don't know if that's even a word, but it's a legal plant, it doesn't hurt kids, it should be in every, uh, if we're going to catch up with the European Union and Russia and the, uh, the bloc countries over there and Canada, they're way ahead of us. We're going to have to employ our young people. Technology. So I didn't realize that other nations had been working on this longer than we had. I thought, I always think Americans are first. Isn't that an American attitude? 
<laughs> so if we had that with hemp, we'd already be making everything from buildings out of it. It would be in every... Are they uh, doing that in other parts of the world? Excuse me? Are they doing that in other parts of the world? Are they doing... Construction technology is advanced by... We have a great construction technology uh, department, thanks to our Department of Transportation. They do fund, they are funding hemp research. But we're still, I would say, 10 years behind. I mean, read up on Bulgaria and Romania. What really? I yeah. will. Yeah, if you, if you do, you can see in seed genetics, primarily what they were been doing in seed genetics. And uh, no, it's been accepted in, um, in some European countries. I, 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 I think that's old Eastern Bloc countries. Um, don't want to say something that uh, that, I, that I'm not knowledgeable on, but I'm 90% sure that they're, those are Eastern Bloc countries. And they were poor countries. And I think they were, I think they were experimenting with hemp uh, back when they were full uh, under full socialism or communist rule. And so if this ties in, I want to let you know about the, uh, before we close, uh, we've elected, if you remember, to close on a note to always invite buyers uh, to come to Oregon, reach out to Southern Oregon Hemp Co-op, Oregon Hemp Co-op, I think, has an independent number now. But uh, no matter how you want to deal with Oregon or when you deal with Oregon, we'd like to welcome you. We'd like to say that under uh, a, a, a very good um, uh, buying agreement that we treat you fair, uh, we have several farms that we can show you um, from, from the very best to... Is this, some, is, this, is this on your website already? Can somebody go on your website and, and find this? Uh, yeah, they can sure find out. Is your question, can they find out all about Southern Oregon Hemp Co-op? No, no, no. I mean, what, what you just said, is there a place, uh, is there a page on your website where they can go and fill out this, um, like, kind of, application? And well, We talked about that, and uh, and I, I haven't done that as of yet. I'm, a, I'm assuming that my uh, webpage person could do that pretty quick, and I think that's a great idea. So, and I will, I will put a link on mine. I'm actually creating a, um, a hemp property page on my alicelima.com real estate. Um, that's going to, I'm going to give it its own page. And so we'll link that to yours. I can also um, create a fillable form if you would like for people. So, because I think the buyers would like to have a, a form to fill out that says, this is, this is the process. This is what you're going to do before you get here. I think they would like that as well. Not just mm -hmm. the farmer. Yeah, I like it when you said it, it invites trust. I think that it does, because if you're sincere and you're a buyer of earnest that has the funds to purchase, why not uh, put that out there and then have us move you along quick because we value your time. And and also if they call or uh, when we get a interactive little notes that they can send me a, an email, of course they can always send me an email and tell me what they want or what they're looking for. I'm basically just like any, any other organization head. I'd like to make their experience in looking at hemp a, a good one and uh, something that they feel like they could come back. Hopefully there'll be a, a buyer once they see how hard our farmers work and what quality of hemp we produce. And so to that, uh, his name is uh, Spencer that purchased that isolate, Alice. Uh huh. And he's substantial enough because I have seen his finances that uh, he is going to be part of our co-op. Oh, yay. Good for you. That's a great, that's a great recruit quite what role, but I would like to uh, have a podcast or a part of it once a month, maybe called Buyer's Corner. And he can kind of put out there what he's looking for and how much he's looking for. Uh, of course, he's not going to be able to take everybody's order, but I know it's kind of on slippery slope because I just met the man. But once again, I have vetted him. He did pay the exact money. Um, he took care of everybody's fees. He was just the utmost professional and to have See, and that like should be that should be our role model that should be our standard for this is how you behave as a buyer and this is how we behave as a, pro, a producer of of hemp products that's yeah. so exciting if if the contract is signed and we're still in negotiations uh alice i think i can say that his order alone will be four hundred and fifty thousand a month Yay for us! Yay for Southern Oregon! That is awesome. God, that's he, great. He fly. He make. He, he flies to all different parts of the world to make connections with the products that he makes. And I don't want to. I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know how much he wants the world to know about him. And I. I've only had it in my marketing plan. Uh, but he did. He did agree to. Um, he loves the idea of a co-op. Yeah. And I, I cannot think of a uh, a better dynamic than to have somebody that is a buyer. Uh, that can help some of our farmers with uh, purchasing their flour and uh, 
and biomass, and I don't know how much of that he wants to uh, uh, to get into, but there's a lot to learn, but it's really nice, uh, I think, as you're feeling it too, to have somebody that has funds and would support the co-op and help us move products. To, oh, our- congratulations, Mike. What a stellar week. First the dryer and now this. This is great. Oh. And uh, we are starting to run out of time. I just so enjoy... I know we have a lot of interesting guests on Happy Hemp Day podcast, but it's always so nice just to get you all to ourselves because we can really dive deep and move around a lot and and get to the nitty gritty of what's going on down here. Yeah, uh, well, I really appreciate your enthusiasm and support, Alice. I'll always tell you that. And it's not just words. I really mean it. Thank you so much. I'm a convert. (laughs) So give us your phone number again. Mark Taylor, Southern Oregon Hemp Co-op. What's your number again? Actually, you should start giving out your email because otherwise people will call you and then your yeah. wife gets mad. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, it's a real, I think it's relatively simple. It's a little bit long, but it's S-O-O-R, Southern Oregon. Uh, S-O-O-R, hemp, spelled like it sounds. Uh, co-op, C-O-O-P, at gmail.com. So S-O-O-R, Southern Oregon, hemp, S-O-O-R, hemp co-op C-O-O-P. at gmail C-O-O-P. <laughs> so all lowercase uh s-o-o-r hemp h-e-m-p coop c-o-o-p at gmail.com super cool all right thank you folks this is happy hemp day saying goodbye thank you mark taylor we will catch you again on the hemp train with uh, the hemppreneurs did i hear you say hemppreneur like an entrepreneur hemppreneur did you say that can i do what did you say hemppreneur, like an entrepreneur? I thought I heard you say that earlier. Well, if I, if I did, it was probably unintentional. Well, it's good. We're going to use it. The hemppreneur train. All there right, folks, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye, Mark. Thanks.